We are all aware in the rest of the world that Latin America and Bolivia in particular are countries with long revolutionary histories. And it is an, I believe that we are now seeing the birth of an entirely new revolution, a revolution which must spread throughout the world if humanity is to be saved and our civilizations are not to collapse. I'd like to tell a short story. It's the story of the caterpillar, which you all know. As you know, a caterpillar starts out as a tiny, tiny creature. And what it does is eat. And it eats, and it eats, and it eats. And I'm sure you've seen it. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger very rapidly. In fact, if it continued eating forever, it would soon grow absolutely enormous. It would eat all its food, and it would die. Fortunately, Mother Earth imposes limits and the caterpillar eats and eats and grows fatter and fatter until one day it stops, goes to a quiet place and becomes still and turns into a pupa. Because there is no future for the caterpillar who grows and eats and eats and eats forever. The point must be reached when a transformation occurs if the caterpillar is to survive. The reason I'm telling this story is because in exactly the same way as the DNA in the cells of the caterpillar de determine how it orders itself and it enables it to restructure itself into a butterfly, so we in society have a certain DNA. And the law operates like a D the DNA of a society. The law determines what is possible and what is not possible in many ways. And it restricts or allows the transformation of a society. What we are trying to do here with establishing the rights of Mother Earth in a way that will enable it to be taken up by legal systems throughout the world is to establish a new DNA, DNA for a society. It is to establish a fundamental structure which, can be, which will enable society to begin the process of, of restructuring itself into an entirely different society which will enable our species to continue to flourish. There is no future, as we can see, for cultures that continue to consume and consume and consume. It is essential at this critical point in the history of our planet that we make a transformation a transformation as significant and far-reaching as the transformation of a caterpillar to a butterfly. Unfortunately, the DNA that structures most existing societies is based on domination and exploitation. It is based on the idea that the earth is a machine, that human beings are separate from the earth and superior to it. And until we change that DNA, we will not be able to restructure our societies in the fundamental way that is necessary. Now, if, we're, if you were born as a white South African as I was, initially you didn't realize what was going on because life was good for you. You didn't see what was happening. But as one grew old, older, I began to realize that I needed to educate myself about the realities of the country that I was living in. I needed to re-educate myself and change many of the ways of thinking which my society had taught me. And eventually, I realized, as soon as one realizes the injustice of the system, I realized that it is not possible to remain silent, to remain quiet in a system of gross injustice is to be an accomplice. Now, this colonial mentality is very strong in almost all cultures, not only between white people and other, uh, other pe people of other skin colors, as in the case in South Africa, but between our species and other species. We most of us grew up in cultures in which we were taught that human beings were superior to 
every other living creature on the earth, that we were in charge and that the best way of ensuring our well-being was to exploit the other members of the community as far as possible. This is the same thinking which created the problem with apartheid. And what is required is for us, the metamorphosis that is required in our societies is to move from a society based on domination, on separation, and on false belief in human superiority, to embrace our participation in this wonderful community of life. In the vast galaxy and universe of which we form part, we have not yet discovered another planet with life, let alone the wonderful, diverse, beautiful communities of life we have on this planet. Now, professionally, I have worked for many years as an environmental lawyer. I began to experience some difficulties in my work and I realized that some of the problems that I was facing couldn't be solved merely by changing the laws. There were problems with the underlying philosophy beneath the laws. And then I was fortunate enough to meet Father Thomas Berry, uh, an American uh, priest. And I can still remember hearing him say, the legal system as a whole legitimizes and perpetuates the, dis the exploitation and destruction of earth. And it was a shock to me because I was one of those guys. I was a lawyer and I thought that the law was doing good. But the problem is, is the, the law has been structured on the basis of this attitude of domination. To give you an example, in the eyes of the law, only human beings and companies are persons, are subjects capable of holding rights. So everything else in creation, fish, trees, rivers, mountains, are things, property, which may be owned but cannot hold rights. And if you think back to when we regarded certain people as properties, we called them slaves, it's very easy to see that there can never be a good, healthy relationship between a slave owner and a slave. The relationship is always one of domination and exploitation. And until we get rid of the idea that Mother Earth and all the beings that form part of her are property and recognize that they are beings who are capable of holding rights and do have inherent rights by virtue of their existence as part of this wonderful community we call Earth, we are going to have problems. We must redress this fundamental imbalance. And I would just like to, to end by commenting that this metamorphosis that I'm talking about is also a personal journey. It's very hard for a lawyer who has been trained to believe that only humans and companies are subjects to suddenly look wider. To most lawyers, if you say rights for, for earth or rights for a river or rights for a tree, it sounds crazy because a lawyer, to a lawyer, a right is something that you can go to court and enforce. But of course, we invented these laws and we can change them. And one of the most important things for us to learn, and is particularly difficult for lawyers, is to learn that there is a source of law that is not the government, it's not the law books, and it's not the courts. The planet itself is a self-ordering system. It is a system of order, and that order creates a lawfulness. It is, a, it is if you like, a kind of legal system. And we need to align our human legal systems with the fundamental legal system of which we form part. We have to start thinking like this. We have to start thinking as part of Mother Earth so that our consciousness is always both of ourselves but as a person, a being within a wonderful community of interrelated beings bound together by intimacy and love. Thank you.